and original. From Story Studio Network. Well, here we go. Thursday, April the 20th, 2023. Welcome in Dave Trafford here at Now and Next. And it's our final installment of this uh, particular podcast. This week, tomorrow, as usual, Friday, will be in your app, whatever app you use. We'll have the latest edition of On the Ledge, the Ontario Politics Podcast. I fully expect the usual suspects. John Wright, Sabrina Nanji, and Keith uh, Keith Leslie, Keith Wright. Wow. Just make them all one. They'll be in the room, and we'll uh, get a little deeper on what's going on at Ontario Place. But there's other stuff going on. And Sabrina's always good for the uh, the fun and the games going on at Queen's Park because she, of course, is the founder and the publisher of Queen's Park Observer. Good to have in the room. So that will be tomorrow in your uh, podcast feeds. Hmm. Love that you guys have been hanging in on that. There's a big anniversary coming up on that show in about three weeks. May the 9th is going to be, uh, how many years? it would be five years for that show alone. Five years for On the Ledge. It started out as the Rit Race. John Wright and I kind of over coffee. Hey, there's going to be an election. You want to do a podcast? <laughs> and here we are. But today, being the 20th day of April 2023, is our SS anniversary. I was really working hard to do that. Yeah, Say that 10 times fast. SS anniversary. Yes, there you go. <laughs> We've been we've been doing well. This was all born through a quick text message, and many of you will may have heard this story already. By the way, um, I'm here today for you're this here episode today. Of the show. I was getting to you. Okay. <laughs> when when I sent a quick text message to Aaron, is here today. Just to say you got a time for a quick call, and God love her, you kept that screenshot of that text message. I'm going to put it up on the social media today <laughs> to explain it. But it's one of those things where in terms of how this has all happened, you know, you and I have been head down busy over the last month and a half, literally. I mean, you created a whole new program for those who are podcast curious and getting people from zero up to running their own show. Mm -hmm. um, it, it also, now we are we have this real growth in terms of new shows that we're producing and developing and it all started because I kind of stumbled upon this idea that I could get four people around the table who were really smart and it would be branded content cuz they would be the thought leaders at the table they owned it and we all brought something to the table that is stories that were important around the next normal as we lived with COVID-19. And, <laughs> and I've told this story before, but when I explained it to you how I had done it and the people who were around the table and why it was working, because they were the producers, that kind of caught them, hey, that's cool. They're hosting this or co-hosting it. That was great. And they were going to be able to talk about their area of expertise and then bounce it off the lens of the other experts around the table. And they saw real value in that. So in that one show, the next normal, they all brought their ideas to the table. Each brought three. We did 12 shows with four co-hosts. It worked out beautifully, but really it was the microcosm of what became the network because it was greater than the sum of its parts. It was a collaborative effort to kind of get branded leadership, thought leadership out there into the universe. And it engaged conversation and community right away. We had no idea what we were doing. Let's face it. I mean, it was quite by accident. Nope. Nope. But look where we are now, yep. right? I know. Well, actually, like if I can be totally candid, right before jumping on this recording, we we're having a meeting and it was 
me and Jamie Nickerson, who some or many of you may know as our VP of production, COO, queen of staff, Jamie wears many hats, many names, um, and our new VP strategy, Andrea, and we're just kind of onboarding Andrea and promoting her into the company more. And she said, you know, Aaron, I really want to shadow you and sit with you and Dave more so that I can truly understand the the big mechanisms that drive the machine. And I said, Andrea, if you fully understand those like mechanisms, like, cause I don't <laughs> tell all. <laughs> I was like, well, we're going to learn together. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's funny. Cause I was like, it's only been two years. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I just want to take us back. Cause I want to, I want to hear your, th- th- what was going on in your brain? Because as I explained <laughs> that to you, mm-hmm. you were very quiet. You didn't interrupt oh. me. Really? Yeah, you were. That, was, that's, 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 that's not, what, were you sure it was me? Was it like, <laughs> like body what, snatchers? Right. That's what? what struck me. I thought, okay, um, this must be the dumbest fucking idea on the planet because she's just not buying in, into this. <laughs> so at the end of it all, I said, oh, and then they're, they're going to pay us. Then they've all agreed to, to do this. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much what you said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the next thing out of your mouth was, have you told anybody about this? And I, and yeah. I said, no. And your answer was? Don't. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, okay, why? Is that not a good idea? Not a, what, what's going on here? So while I was looking at it as the content producer, mm-hmm. you immediately elevated this to something that I hadn't expected. Oh, really? No, really. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because it, the, the way you had framed it for me was, yeah, it's not just about the content. You immediately honed in on the actual mechanism of what we were able to do to take, we've created community in a small way. If we can template this, we can take it and do other shows. Mm-hmm. Within the course of, you know, 90 minutes, you had already visioned out, maybe not completely, but had taken my idea of a round table for the next normal to, okay, this is going to grow and it's going to explode and it's going to be huge. And I'm thinking, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I haven't even turned a microphone on. <laughs> I have, well, you know, I was chatting with a business colleague last week. And uh, so, so back to what you said, and I'll, I'll answer your question. I actually don't think you asked a question, but I'll respond that, we hosted our accelerator last week, ready to record. And it was two intense days. We brought 25 B2B business owners together in a virtual room and basically taught them the SSN approach to to podcasting over the course of a couple of days. And there were trainings and interactions and it was just, and it was way more organized and specific than you. I have just explained the the initiating process to you. We have refined our process. We have. And and it was, but it was really, really fun. And, And something that was so funny and Jamie likes to call my attention to this all the time is that, the most frequently used emoji to describe me, because I do workshops a lot. I love teaching in workshops and we host them, you know, quarterly every couple months, just kind of freebies to get people understanding how podcasting could work. And, you know, um, I've been doing it for years and <laughs> the most frequently used emoji is the head explodey emoji. Yeah, I saw that a lot. <laughs> and that, like, I'm not I exaggerating. No, it yeah. is the number one. And then I had a, a call with a couple of business colleagues. We're talking, you know, chewing on some ideas and some really big ideas for where we want SSN to go. And, you know, throughout the course of another 90 minute kind of business brainstorm, um, the same, I have the same impact where, you know, he'll come to me and say, okay, I've got this idea for this show or like, this is how it would look. And here's the kind of how I think we would monetize it. And I say, yeah, but what about this? And here's where that needs to be flipped around. And because if we flip it around, we're going to create more value for the audience here. And we're going to actually create more revenue here. And we're going to open up channels for more advertisers to play in the podcast space here. And then he sent me an email following that call that was nothing but head explodies. (laughs) That's getting messy. So, I mean... Maybe that's just my lot in life. Is no, that... but it's it's hilarious how, how you know, I don't know if you get the same reaction. You might not, but I get the, <clears throat> the reactions. You must have a ball working with your daughter. And I do. I mean, I, this is this is extraordinary. There's an accept coming here, folks. No, 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 no. <laughs> 
if there's an accept, it's just trying to keep up with you. The idea that, and people, you know, and, and then people look at me and say, you know, the wink and say, and Aaron's the boss. I said, fucking right. I mean, I know my place. So that's not a problem here. But the, the interesting thing to me is that you and I both come from the newsroom background mm-hmm. I and mean, everybody recognizes that. But I probably, I, I know just you know, more of my career was spent on the heavily focused on production and the content creation and so on. You took all of that genius and then went to the digital marketing strategy stuff that happens online. Mm-hmm. And it's at that moment when I said to you, got time for a quick call, both of those things just Converged. collided. It was the big bang. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I want to look back at the, you know, my hobby is like, is astrology and human design just because it helps me relax thinking about things that don't actually matter. Um, I want to go back and look at the astrology from that day because maybe there was something celestial. Could have been. I mean, it's an eclipse right now and Mercury retrograde. So you know, isn't it um, always in retrograde? I, I, every time I talk to you, it's no, this is, this is another podcast. This is another okay, podcast. Okay, okay. Right. Um, but to, here's an admission I will make. Cause I don't know if you've done this math, but I have been an entrepreneur in business and executive content strategy longer than I worked in a newsroom now. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I made the flip from, you know, I will always be a journalist. I always will have that. eye. I mean, I went, I, I have done cool stuff, but through the last, I'm going to say year that I have really been looking at this business as the future of media. I make no qualms about that. Anybody who asks me, what do you do? I run Story Studio Network right now. We're a production company, but I am on a mission to create the standard for new media in Canada. That's just yeah. that's just kind of the shoes I, I feel called to fill. And that's been a lot of, you know, learning about why I have that head explodey. <laughs> kind of like impact effect on people. And it's, and I, I look back on my career and I think about, yeah, I was great on air and I always had great air checks and I was, you know, people loved me on the morning shows cause I'm, you know, pretty funny and self-deprecating, but I can do a wicked news read and I have a good ear. Like I've got all those things that I think I naturally had because I grew up in a household with you. Mm-hmm. Like you, you taught me from a very young age how to sound and how to listen for sound. But I, I really think that, that I have actually always been fascinated by the business of media. Mm-hmm. I truly think that. And it took me a really long time to actually admit that. Like, I love being a journalist, but I love the entrepreneurship side of media. It, that is where I crave the creativity. And so when we came together, it was like, boom. Well, yeah. let me just stop you there because it's funny. We, we, you know, in the course of having these conversations, you know, we've got a, just this great, small but mighty team that is growing, as you just pointed out. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, you know, somebody like Andrea has this. She kind of ha- has your brain a little bit in terms it's of her ability scary. to kind of yeah. grab, and you know. So there's going to be heads exploding all over the place. Jamie, it comes from that world. She has no experience in in media at all, but she is our sort of project manager, our operations man. Like she's got, she's the glue that's holding everything together. And what I find is we've got folks on that side of the table. And then we've brought people in like Becky Coles and Kim Geddes and Mike Trutler and Drew Garner and Nick Myrano and Paul Gatt. And if you are radio listeners in Toronto, you'll know all of those names. We're going to be adding another veteran broadcast mm-hmm. name to, uh, to, to the suite soon. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned for that. We're very excited about the whole thing. But they're all major market broadcasters mm-hmm. that bring it to the, the this, this part of the uh, operation. But why not watch... It's interesting to me to see how, I don't know, you hate me when I use this phrase called eat what you kill, but the idea that you, that's, there's a certain fear in that, right? I mean, that projects a certain fear. Like, oh my God, I'm not going to, I'm not going to eat if I don't kill something here. I have to be the hunter. Yeah. And that's the approach I took when I, you know, when the newsroom left me, Mm -hmm. all right, I have to go out and figure this out. And all those years in the newsroom, you probably got out just at the right time because you could make that pivot. 
But for those of us who had been in there for decades, mm-hmm. it's a harder thing to do because we're not taught to be entrepreneurial nope. as journalists. No. Nope. And I'll, honest to God, that's a, a large part of why legacy media, particularly news media, is circling the bowl. If if we had all discovered what you discovered 12 years ago even, mm-hmm. right? If the If the schools had actually put that, thinking that lightning in a bottle thinking we can have content creation and entrepreneurial journalism. If we can put that together, man, imagine how the landscape would have changed. It didn't happen, but that's where we find ourselves now. So what I'm really enjoying is watching the journo heads on Mm -hmm. the one side, kind of all of a sudden discover, Oh, I have permission. I can step up and own this project. I can be, you know, shaping the voice of this new media. That's pretty exciting. Well, it, it, did you read my LinkedIn post yesterday or the day before? Because this is exactly what I posted on LinkedIn. Oh, well, there you go. I'm glad um, we're my that old. I, I, I had a, a, a memory of, a, of an email dropping into my account, and this was like way before SSN. I, I don't remember when this was. I think I had, you know, five years ago, I want to say, five or four, Um Hey, Aaron, it, it's the coordinator academic chair at one of the local colleges. We are, we've got an opening on our faculty. We'd like to talk to you. Okay. And it was a one course called media entrepreneurship. And it was the, in the final year of the radio and television program. Mm. This, this was a new breadth requirement that they were adding to the syllabus or the, whatever it was, it didn't exist. And so they wanted somebody who really understood to come in and, craft the outcomes like what would the outcome here be and I was like whoa this is amazing not not to mention that we had just you know renovated our house and decided to stay and it was like three blocks from the school I was like this is going to be a great side gig for me to really you know figure Mm -hmm. out how I interact with the content so I I said okay well media entrepreneurship here's what you got to do if these folks are actually being taught in their first couple of foundational years how to cut tape how to be on tv how to source a story how to edit how to you know all those things that journalists need to learn and then they're into their final year I said this course needs to put them in context so you got to teach them to value their work beyond an hourly rate, value their work beyond the this is easy to do. You actually need to teach them to value and evaluate in the market what they are doing. The creativity itself, the journalistic integrity has value. That needs to be somehow measurable in this program. Then you need to be able to ask them to say, place yourself in the context of the greater whole. Do a project where you design a newsroom and you decide who, you know, pick a market, build an ideal newsroom, figure out how to pay for them. Who do you need on the team? How many sales do you need to make? Where does the sales come from? Teach them that unlike what I was taught, and I have a fancy degree from a fancy stinking school where they taught us the opposite of this, that sales is an antagonist to journalism. It is not. Those newsrooms across Canada are, are suffering and they are being cut and they are being obliterated because there's a failure on the other side to be creative with the sales. If the sales departments were being creative, there would be money to pay for good journalism. They operate together separate but equal. And so teaching students from the get-go how to allow those two things to exist in integrity with each other is critical to the health of a real journalistic society. It just is, but it's not taught. Journalists are taught to stay away from salespeople. So I said, we got to figure out a way to teach them that. And then we got to teach them how to price themselves, how to not have a poverty mindset, how to learn how to advance their careers within the system in a way that forges creativity, relationship building, networking, and you use the word ownership. Mm -hmm. They offered me the job at just above minimum wage. I said, (laughs) no, thank you. And be great. they hired someone from the PR department to teach it. And it ended up being, here's how to be a freelancer. So, you know, 
And I, and I think I put on LinkedIn, like, this is why I sigh a lot, <laughs> right? right? That was just such a missed opportunity. And so, you know, all this to say that that's how I look at media. I'm so bullish on this. I'm, I'm you know, SSN has been functioning for the last couple of years, truly as a production agency with a media backing. And the way I want the next iteration of this company to be, and we're taking these steps right now, is that, no, you know what? We're a media company via podcasting. Mm -hmm. That's what we are. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I guess a couple of weekends ago, do you follow Fred Jacobs? I do. You see his news, newsletter? Yeah. So for those of you who, who don't, look him up. He's um, a federal out of the United States, all kinds of, you know, um, gray beard experience like mine in broadcasting, particularly in radio. And he and his partner talk about sort of the way in which you can do what Aaron was talking about and bridging those two gaps. Mm -hmm. One of them deals with content, that is programming, the other one on the sales side of it, and they show where they have to over overlap. And he had posted something on, I think it was LinkedIn, Anyway, and the, but his newsletter said something to the effect that those people, those folks in radio who are running out the clock mm. are actually hurting yes. the industry. And he said so from the point of view of you're running out the clock, you're, just, you're not putting the kind of energy that you've so well described into where we need to be, how we need to get there, how we need to touch our audiences, make them part of the the programming experience, whether it's music or, or news or news talk, it doesn't really matter. And his line was, you know, if you, if you can't bring it every day, get the hell out of the way because there'd be somebody in there that would be willing to bring in that innovative spirit and everything else. And he was cheering for it. And I, God love him. I'm glad that he did. But I answered him back and I said, you know, all of these things are true, except the media as it stands now. And you, you could pick any, radio station, any television company, newspapers particularly, mm -hmm. there is no, they're not built to respond to the kind of energy that you've just described no. with f from journalists or from content creators who have innovative new ideas. The, the, the suggestion box just doesn't exist. No. Never mind gets open and read. So the problem with this is that there's, we're trying to jam in, new media thinking into old media and the structure just doesn't allow for it. And my answer back to him was, you know, here I am, I'm going to be in broadcast podcast for celebrating 40 years in September. And a lot of people would be saying, well, you must be getting ready to retire. I get that all the time. I'm uh, no, I'm not, I'm not ready to retire. And part of it is because I've been reinvigorated through the podcast medium. Certainly that's been amplified because of what we're doing at story studio network. And I'm hanging around with people who are, you know, 30, 40 years younger than I am. And they make me feel excited mm -hmm. and passionate all of a sudden about it. Mm -hmm. So this to me is, is really kind of a, um, to your point, using that word, that new media, and that's going to apply to so many things. And it, you know, good local journalism can be done this way. We've proven that you can do great, um, branded, mission-driven content. We've been doing it with the Daily Bread Food Bank and a whole bunch of other people. We've proven that you can take a, a, a solopreneur who wants to present herself as a thought leader in, you know, whatever practice of law Corinne mm -hmm. Boudreau is, is, is taking up, and her show is called Get It In Writing. And she's got, I don't know, what is it, 25 or 30 different shows that she produced. And she's got this beautiful library of content now that she can just put out there in the universe. And if anybody's got a question on what should I do if, well, she did a great piece on who owns the copyright when you generate something through chat GPT. That's a good question. So she researched it and did a 12 minute podcast on it. Now it's sitting on the shelf and somebody can go and listen to it. Mm -hmm. That's that's new media. That is branded media. It's how all of these these sense of entrepreneurial spirit come to the reporting around journalistic, you know, approaches to podcasting. Um, so the old idea, it's not even like you're breaking the idea. We we're so far past it's broken and it can't be fixed. It can't yeah. be rebuilt. 
we're, this is an emerging media. And that's what it kind of has occurred to me over the last two years. I, I've been doing the podcasting longer than that and I've loved it. But wow, there are some extraordinary possibilities and opportunities here. Yeah, and I just think that we're, you know, by accident or design or whatever design <laughs> we're looking at, um, we're, I'm in the right place. I, I, I feel exactly the same way. I'm, I'm energized by the fact that I see so many gaps that the ivory tower folks just aren't looking at. It's very clear to me that they're not. Um, and I think that's an opportunity for a lot of folks, you know, who are throwing money at trying to get earned media. We're seeing that too. Like Mm -hmm. new media is starting to fill those gaps and, There is just, you know, we take the approach at Story Studio Network of, well, why can't we, right? Whereas when you go to the radio station, you know, they're going to say, here's, here are the two things you can do. You can either fight for the earned media with the host and the producers and the gatekeepers, and you can pay a PR firm to get you that, or you can take our rate card and buy spots on the radio. And by the way, when we show you a rate card, it's not actually the rate you're going to pay because- that's just to get the conversation started and we're still going to discount at 50%. And all of these things are happening in the background. Like there's this whole business practice of putting out a rate card. That's a lie, right? Like we know this. (laughs) So if that, if those are the only two ways for you as a business owner, an organization, somebody who has something, a story to tell to access media and journalists, something is broken. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and, you know, you, you kind of go back to the idea of um, what the journalists are bringing. What's the value of what they're bringing to it? Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I got fired at Global, that's the first thing I had to do. Is, okay, why w- first, I don't want to be back in a news director's job. I, di- I, I don't want that mm-hmm. right away. Even though that's kind of a little bit what you're doing right now, by the way. Yeah. Well, it is and it isn't. Not not in those no, not, not in those environments, right? Not at all right? the same. No, yeah. Right. So, and I and I sat down and and I started to write down why is it that someone would want to hire me? What would they want me for? And I went through that actual process, and you know, I know you're good at note taking. You've got notebooks all over the place with your ideas and so on. But I filled a notebook with all this stuff, and then. Somebody wanted to hire me, um, and it was a not-for-profit on a on an interim contract to do some comms work for them. And they came out, and they knew me for what I did. They knew me because I was on the radio in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And they said, "Okay, so we'd like to have you come aboard. What would it cost to have you join us for six months?" And I just threw a number at them, and they said, "Okay, good." And it was it was more than I was making as a news director. Mm-hmm. running the newsroom. And I thought, all right, it's two things. Somebody values me for what I have to say, how I think, how I'm approaching this. And the second thing is, there's a shitload of money out here well, people are willing to spend. But the other way to think about it from the, from the flip side of this is let's say that that organization, and this is how we're modeling some future growth at SSN, is like let's say that organization is already throwing money at – a PR firm to get earned media, which is not guaranteed. There's not these off, days. no, there's nothing guaranteed about that. You don't maybe own, explain what earned media is because some people might not be fully aware. So earned is like literally, actually, now that I, I hate the term, it means you earned a spot on the news or on the talk mm-hmm. show by convincing someone through a press release, a pitch, um, a handshake agreement over a beer, or whatever that is. Somebody has an in at one of the stations to get you airtime or, yeah. or, print you know, or print whatever. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's earned media. And so the way PR and media relations evolved over the last 20 years or so is that there are folks who have perfected that art, perfected, quote unquote, that are very good at that. And they charge for those services. And a lot of big agencies will charge a retainer and PR and press release and all those things is part and parcel of the whole package. But these days, with the way the traditional landscape is is shaping up, you know, where you used to send a, a press release, you'd get pick up from a few outlets, five, six, if you're lucky. Now you're lucky if you get any response at all. Right? So you're paying 10, 20, 30, well, I don't know how many thousands of dollars a month 
to have this earned media approach, back that up. You don't own the content, even if you do get the earned media. You also don't have control over how that all shapes up. Who are you put in context with in that piece in the globe? Who are you beside in the 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 news, like the wrap, the wraparound that they do about the story? You You don't have control over that. So what we're saying to folks now is organizations, because media is so challenging and hard to navigate, are starting to need to actually take a newsroom approach to their own comms. So they kind of got to think, how do we own our narrative? How do we own our content? How do we create something of value for the audience that kind of cuts out the middle person? And I'm not saying PR is a bad thing. I think PR is a great thing. But all I'm saying is that there is now an alternative that we're seeing organizations turn to, which is some of them are doing YouTube channels. Some of them are doing branded podcasts, like working with us. Some of them are thinking bigger about how and that can feel for them. And it's so exciting to me. It's so well, exciting it- to me because imagine, imagine that that not-for-profit instead of doing $10,000 a month in press releases that may or may not go anywhere. They hire two journalists to tell those stories for them objectively, editorially, mm-hmm. and put them on platforms where it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And, and then and you do an earned buy. Like, I just, there's so much potential. Well, and the interesting thing is, and it's worth pointing out that this sounds like us against the PR people. No. There are agencies right now that we talk to Mm -hmm. regularly who are interested in how can we use this vehicle as part of this comms media strategy. And it, and it's working remarkably well. We're not creating the strategy necessarily for them. They've already got it in mind. How can we supplement and support it? So the, 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 the growth on that side of the ledger, and I say that advisedly, is really interesting to see because it's generated a whole lot more targeted mm-hmm. programming mm-hmm. in podcasting, particularly, and the analytics around podcasting. And I, you know, you you talk about it all the time that the um, intimacy at scale, so mm-hmm. that every time somebody listens, I feel like I'm the only one in the room, but there are a whole bunch of other people <laughs> who are listening. And if it's done right, you create far more effective champions who are going to engage with your idea or they're going to repeat your idea more so than if you did, you know, an interview on even the top leading talk show in the country, you're going to get response. There's no question if you do that, Mm -hmm. but you don't get the kind of referral that you would otherwise get from, from this medium. So there, there, there will be that melding of these this world. Yeah. And there's going to be, there's all kinds of opportunity to do it right. We just did a whole thing on social license, mm-hmm. right? And, and the idea that you can use it and then podcasting is a great way to do that because we can do it in the context of being able to say, we're consulting or we're listening or we're feeling or we're talking about an issue that's important to a particular community or a market or whatever it might be. And the last thing you want to be doing is sounding like you're selling something. Sounding like you're inauthentic. If you're not telling real, good, personalized stories, people will dismiss you. Yeah. As soon as you start to do that. All right. Now, I might not, I might not agree with you, but you've engaged me. Mm-hmm. And to that point, um, it's an important component now in the media. It's not kind of this off the side of your desk thing that, you know, 10 or 15 years ago it was. I don't even think that long ago. I think it's evolved that quickly. So, so yeah, I mean, I'm, it's hard to believe that it's been two years. Yeah. It feels no kidding, eh? way longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I snorted. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. That's, that's proof. feels way longer. <laughs> like that's, that's the truth. The honest truth. Every week feels like a month. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I, yeah. I, again, if you were to say that to somebody on the other side of the media scale, and that is in the sort of the legacy mainstream, we'll call it media, although I'm beginning to think that digital and podcasting is part, is taking up a whole lot more space in that mainstream yeah. media. But there, if, if you had told that, heard that story from somebody who was working in conventional television, 
They would say that from the point of feeling burned out and ready to quit. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's not where we are. No, no, no. (laughs) I I say that in that, like, it feels like a lot has happened in two years. Not that I'm I'm ready to give up. It just feels like where we were two years ago versus where we are now. Um, I'm a, I'm a completely different person. Well, and, and, and what we're doing is completely different. Yeah. I mean, we have evolved probably what, there might be six versions of what we've done from probably. the time we had our initial conversation. Yeah. Right. And each one building on the other, we've never really got, we, we're not off the branded podcast, um, uh, track. We still do that by all means, but it's all of a sudden opening up these new ideas, opportunities around it. And it's audience driven. Mm -hmm. There's an audience demand for this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going away for a week next week and I'm excited to just let my brain, maybe I can make my own brain explode. (laughs) Is that the next frontier? (laughs) There we go. That's yeah. That's starting to sound like an episode of Picard. I I do want to rebrand my podcast. So permission to leap is, is like set to retire and I'm really noodling, like, what do I need a show and what should it be? Yeah. Um, I'd be curious what the now and next folks want to hear from me. That would be an interesting thing. If you have an idea, find me on LinkedIn, pop me a note, email us. I'm really, I'm not, I'm, I am struggling because I think uh, there is a, you know, there's part of me that wants to talk about business, but there's also part of me that wants to talk about podcasting, but I, I don't know. Like, is this, mm-hmm. you know media entrepreneurship is that the show that i should have will too many heads explode well i i I, yeah i think that's probably where we're at whether you know you and i talk about the curse of knowledge whether we know it or not that's where we are we're on sort of this edge of you know podcast entrepreneurial media kind of convergence Mm -hmm. and and it is to say that there is more collaboration between the entrepreneurial sales generation side of things, great storytelling and good journalism. They all live in the same place. Yeah. Right. So anyway, um, I just thought it was worth, nope. I don't know if anybody else was going to note the, the SS anniversary. Uh, so I thought we, we probably should, but what I'm going to do is uh, Thursdays we have a, typically I would use this as a sort of the feed dump day, do a quick headline and then mm-hmm. drop in one of our shows. Maybe what I'll do is next week I'll start, and I'm going to rerun the whole Next Normal series, just to kind of kick off year three. Mm-hmm. It reintroduce folks to the brilliant brains, Dave Hardy, Sarah Thorne, Lisa Taylor, Ujwal or Callgood, and you get a sense of their jam that they brought to the table all the time and the great ideas and the discussion Mm -hmm. that it it generated. What, what hits Um, me when I think about that show is those four, frankly, like just brilliant genius and lovely people. Yeah, exactly. Is thinking back the level of trust they placed in us. I think about that. I'm like, we really didn't know what we were doing, but they trusted that we did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it and turned they, out great, right? And they have been extraordinary supporters of what All we've of done. All of them, yeah. And, and, you know, showed up and giving us good advice, if not uh, joining us on other programs. So uh, so let's do that. Maybe next week we'll um, make Thursdays our uh, feed dump day and uh, feed drop. Let's put it that way. It sounds nicer. Mm-hmm. This is the Friday dump and the Thursday feed drop. And we'll... Uh, We'll roll it out. It'll be 12 episodes. So that'll take you nicely into uh, June, to the summer, and take a look. And then, you know what? For those of us kind of putting COVID-19 in the rearview mirror, did we learn anything from that experience? Did we actually build back better? They've got, they aren't just in a place where they're pointing out the problems. They actually talk solutions. Mm -hmm. So let's see how good we were at doing that. All right. Happy SS anniversary, Aaron. SS anniversary. SS anniversary. SS SS anniversary. You're going to do that. We have the same (laughs) brain that's exploding. All right. That'll do it for us. You can find me at Dave Trafford on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on the LinkedIn. And if you don't follow Aaron on LinkedIn, make sure you do because uh, she's far more active and brighter than I am on that platform. Um, And, you know, touches on a lot of the stuff that we talked about. 
talked about uh, here today. Otherwise, you can find our website at storystudionetwork.com. Now and Next is produced by Becky Coles. Our production manager is Jamie Nickerson. Audio editors are Mike Trutler and Drew Garner. And our sonic logo designer is Greg McDonald. Our executive producers are Dave and Aaron Trafford. This is SSN. Story Studio Network.